So key parts for me are actually, you know, the integration of security research into a lot of the activities that corporations and governments have to do to secure their systems. Um, you know, it started as more of an adversarial relationship where vendors were writing software and hackers were trying to tell them about security flaws and being met with threats, intimidation, you know, essentially discouraging them from coming forward, even though the hackers were actually working on the same side as the companies because they were trying to protect users. So actually, my keynote tomorrow with Chris Weisopel of Vericode is actually going to go through some of the key historic points in the evolution of coordinated vuln disclosure over the last 23, 22 plus years. Um, so I think you know, in the, in the last several years, we've seen a huge adoption in these programs, but we've also seen, you know, some of the backlash and some of the downsides of rushing into them before you're ready. So cybersecurity has evolved really well. I mean, I, every dimension I can think of, except one, which I'll get to in a minute, but every dimension I can think of is a, is a net positive. The people involved in our industry, so much better. The, the chief information security officers are well trained. They're committed to the industry. They have a background and context. Amazing. The people working on their teams are better. They're, they're better technical. They're better at dealing with compliance. They're better managers. It's just across the board. The people are so much better than I saw 20, 30 years ago. Second dimension is the technology that's available. My goodness. Um, a sentence you will never hear is, gosh, I wish we had better technology in cyber. Which is, it's, it, for me, it's like I'm a kid in a candy store when I come to conferences like RSA because there's so much wonderful stuff. I love it's about everything Tripwire does. It's so good and it's better and it's uplifting. It's encouraging. But the one thing that's not worked out is that the threat, <laughs> the offense, is evolving and accelerating at a pace that exceeds what we're doing. So all the good that's going on in our industry is not for naught, but it's exceeded by the problems that I see primarily in two camps, nation state, criminal actors. Both of them just see these opportunities and they use automation, they use AI, <laughs> all the same things we use, and, and they've managed to, to out, outgun us. So we've got to close that gap. We need, we need to get the airplane to start to come closer to ground. Instead of the airplane creating distance, airplane being offense, ground being defense, we need the plane to start coming down. It'll never completely land, but that's okay. Um, a risk is not something you remove, it's something you manage. And right now, it's too high and it's getting worse. So that is the real challenge. That's why someone like myself, um, you know, can, can devote a, a life to this. You know, it's something that vocationally is worth devoting your life to because, uh, let's face it, um, our society is dependent on us getting this right. Um, the next generation is going to be much more virtual. We, we debate these things like, should elections be automated? Come on. It, you think when millennials are running the world, they're going to do anything other than everyone have an app? I mean, it's silly to even imagine that what we do now will perpetuate. So the world is moving in that direction. We're dependent on computing to warm our homes and feed our, feed our children and, and, and just live our lives. So we better get this right or else we could have a very big problem. So I think, um, you know, I'm going to look inwardly a little bit on that. I think the, 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 the key thing, the key difference I've seen is that um, as an industry, we're a lot less navel gazing and and uh you know shouting into the void than we used to be we're 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 becoming a lot more aligned to um you know to the business that we're trying to support rather than just being the business prevention unit the the the, the team that says no to everything just because security so i'm seeing that shift happen a lot um and that i think you know you talk about threats i think that was a threat to us that was a threat a significant threat to our success and something that we could we should have owned and you know and dealt with uh, before then 
Um, I think you know the the other thing is you know this this perception of who we are and, and, and evolving who we are and trying to see ourselves you know more as professionals in our own right rather than a subset of say something like IT. So reporting lines, for instance, I'm seeing more people reporting outside of IT, even into you know CEO and and, and boards etc. So you know you're removing those conflicts of interest. So, you know, again, let's let's not look outside just yet. You know, from you know threats, etc. The change. I think we as a as a profession have actually um, are starting to engage the, the you know the internal threats that we we uh, present to ourselves. So we have a lot different, more technology today with the IoT, Internet of Things, where we all wear technology quite often. We have it all around us in our vehicles, in our refrigerators, not our toasters yet, but maybe on our walls with our thermostats. How do we protect all of that, whether it's on our home network or within a business? We have this challenge of people just bringing in their home devices and plugging them in at the business, which may or may not be secure. Like the Amazon Alexa or Google Home, someone brings in just to play music, they're thinking it's a Bluetooth speaker. And it is, but it's also listening to everything we say, which is what it's meant to do. So it's just overcoming those types of challenges and building IT to be able to know those types of devices exist to make sure they're properly segmented and secured. I've really seen cybersecurity in this field evolve a lot in the 10 years that I've been in the industry. Um, we could talk about the technical side. You know, one thing that I've been very keen on throughout my work is to um, engage in an optimistic approach and an optimistic message about cybersecurity. I noticed a few years ago that as a discipline, we were paying a lot of attention to what the attackers were doing. There were lots of timelines of malware and timelines of ransomware and timelines of attacks. We were keeping track of the um, attacks, you know, the ransomware, the malware, all of the things that the attackers were doing. And it's great that we were keeping track of that, but we weren't really keeping track of where we were making progress. So we actually started at Sygenta to keep a list of milestones that show in the last sort of even just 30, 40 years, how much progress we have made in, in technical ways and in non-technical ways. In my myself, I've seen um, a great deal of change with regards to the human side of cybersecurity. When I started in the industry about 10 years ago, I would tell people I work in cybersecurity on the human side and they would wonder what that meant. Now here we are at RSA and the theme is the human element. Like, I think everyone gets the importance of the human side and that for me is a huge leap forward. From what I have learned in dealing with professions, uh, the professionals in this field is that um, things aren't the same. They have definitely gotten more concise, and the attack vectors have gotten, you know, you think they're wider and, and, and broader. No, they're actually more concise, and there's a lot smarter people at younger ages now doing these things, and people you wouldn't normally expect to be experts at these types of things are now, you know. It, it, very prevalent in the profession. Um, it, where will the profession, uh, you know, go? That that's a, a great question. I don't know that I have a great answer for it right now. All I know is right now that, uh, to me, it's it's really really a people problem on defending it, and and they're also the people you have to keep up with. You know, they're the attackers too. So. Um, I, I would I would have to guess that we're going to start seeing in like preschools and middle and kindergartens and elementary schools that security becomes a core part of curriculum just like English math science the concept of security um, is going to be just it has to be extremely embedded at a very early sure. age yeah. um, which is crazy because that you then start saying oh wow are we gonna go and kind of have to re relook at the curriculum for our entire educational system um, and it's probably probably it past due I mean with the way that technology is change changing well, I focus a lot, again, my expertise is in the wireless area and how the wireless aspect is often the conduit to break into a company to get onto the computer network so they can work laterally. And, and for me, one of the areas that I focus in often on is IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, we all hear about it, billions and billions of devices that are going to be connected. Everybody 
has this desire to connect into the internet, whether it's our home thermostat, our smart refrigerator, soon our cars, our mobile devices, we can connect into multiple cameras, our work, our business, or watch the dog at the dog pound while we're away on vacation and we can see that Fido is happy and safe and secure. These things are cool, these things are exciting. However, looking forward to the future, how secure is the IoT devices that we're quickly plugging into everything. That's a concern I have. Lots of talk about it. The question is, has manufacturers really baked in security up front? Some have, some are addressing it. They're doing a great job. Some have now added the ability so you could later on firmware upload and put security patches in to fix it. That's beautiful. They're listening, they're responding. And some are not. And that's the, really the concern, especially when they're mass produced devices, low cost, and that security is not baked in and there is no way to patch it. There's no way to upgrade it. So there's a, there's a lot more work that I think has to be done, but looking forward to the future with billions and billions of IoT devices being connected into the internet, I think we have to think about it a little bit careful and maybe slow down as consumers, as business owners, before we're so quick to plug into the internet and just ask ourselves the basic questions. Is this secure? Can I upgrade this? What happens if somebody compromises this? Those type of basic questions will help us not to be too quick to plug in and make a mistake. That's kind of